I know a lot of you guys love your Major League Baseball, and I promise you we are going to dig into the ratings for the end of the regular season and the wild card round of the playoffs. I've completed all the research already. I have it ready to go. The picture, it's not as grim for Major League Baseball as I initially thought yesterday afternoon. Not exactly what I would call great, but not too bad either. I had planned on getting into that this morning, but something happened on Monday Night Football last night that takes precedence over baseball. Typically, I'm not one of those NFL fans that blames officiating for the outcome of games. Sometimes I think NFL officials get a bad rap. In terms of officiating, being a referee in the NFL, hardest job in professional sports. In baseball, you might have one, maybe two plays during a game where you're required to make a quick judgment call in a close situation. Hell, in some baseball games, it doesn't happen at all. Officiating in the NBA, it can be difficult. We see bad calls here and there, but NBA officials have the benefit of replay. There is no replay in the NFL when it comes to penalties. The speed of the game is so fast. NFL officials, they have to make these judgment calls in a matter of seconds. It's easy for us as fans to see a replay two, maybe three times and second guess a decision in hindsight that NFL officials had to make in seconds. In the past, I have leaned towards giving NFL officials the benefit of the doubt. And this is coming from a Saints fan. My team has been screwed so many times by NFL officials. We're in competition with Shea Shea Sharp for who has the loosest bongo. We have reached a point with officiating in the NFL where there's just no other way to say it. NFL officials are the worst in professional sports. We are five weeks into the regular season. It's already been some of the worst officiating that I've ever seen. Remember when the referees went on strike? I think it was about 10 years ago. They had to bring in those bums as replacement officials. You remember that? Now, it hasn't reached that level of shit just yet, but they are well on their way. Two weeks ago, officiating determined the outcome of the game between the Saints and Vikings. Sunday, it determined the outcome between the Falcons and the Bucks. There have been numerous instances this season where games have been determined by whistles instead of by players. I'm going to be honest with you, and this is pure speculation on my part. I think all of this starts at the top. I believe this is a directive from Roger Goodell. The NFL is under immense pressure and scrutiny to make the game safer. Every week, the mainstream media is crucifying this league over player safety. We talked about this over the weekend when live on MSNBC, Tiffany Cross stuck the woke wiener in Michael Smith and made him agree that the NFL doesn't care about black players. But here's the thing. Roger Goodell, he can't please two masters. Matter of fact, by trying to make the game safe, he's still not appeasing the mainstream media since there's no fucking way to make football safe. And he's pissing off the fans because officials are getting in the way of the game. It's affecting quality of play. So with that being the case, who is the winner here? It's the mainstream media. The media doesn't give a shit about player safety. They just need an excuse to shit on the NFL. They want fans pissed off with the league. Doesn't matter how they get to that point. If fans start turning off the NFL because the officiating is bad, the media wins. Last night on Monday Night Football, NFL officials made another egregious call. Raiders in a two-minute drill late in the second quarter. Derek Carr gets sacked. One of the cleanest sacks that you'll ever see. Derek Carr fumbles the ball. Chiefs recover. Flag gets thrown. Chiefs get hit with roughing the passer. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City erupts with boos. The only time I have heard boos this loud in Kansas City is when Jackie Mahomes takes the field to perform his latest routine from Ballerina Bongo. Broadcasters have been shitting on NFL officials all season. Last night, Troy Aikman joined the club. Now, I hope this doesn't get taken down for copyright reasons. ESPN, they have always treated me well when it comes to copyright issues. The NFL, on the other hand, refuses to cooperate. But listen to the commentary from Troy Aikman. The play again, the ball comes out right there. And the ball is possessed by Jones. It's too much. I mean, my hope is the competition committee looks at this in the next set of meetings and, you know, we take the dresses off. 
Second. I want to sincerely apologize to all of you who were offended by that egregious comment. I mean, how dare Troy Aikman say it's time to take off the dresses? Oh, oh, the mythical misogyny is too much to bear. Troy Aikman should be suspended. He violated the woke commandments. Mythical misogyny carries a harsh punishment. Troy Aikman must be baptized and born again, returning to Utopia named Toya. He must undergo three years of sensitivity training along with weekend performances in front of children at the Shag and Dragon Drag Club. Seconds after hearing that comment, the Twitter virgins erupted in full force. Oh, the virginity was on full display. Now you have to remember, the comments I'm about to show you, these comments are coming from people who can't identify a woman. They can identify mythical misogyny, they can identify good-looking Frank and his beans. They can identify freshly squeezed Donnie branded lemons. But you put a biological woman in front of them wearing a bikini, the shit fucks are confused. I have never seen a birthing person like this before. What are those things protruding from its chest? Woke women like Rachel Levine only have protrusions in their pants. Let's return to the nerdium and study this mysterious figure. What better way to start off? Then with commentary from our favorite Star Trek virgin, Mike Freeman, the man who spanks his wanker to shirtless pictures of Captain Kirk, he informed Troy Aikman that he can make his point without mentioning dresses, which confused me. I thought woke male birthing persons liked when men talked about dresses. Hell, during woke Christmas, streets in every major city across America, they were filled with men wearing dresses and thongs. So I'm a bit confused as to why this comment from Troy Aikman inflamed the roids in their bongo. Check out this next comment from one of the contestants in the upcoming Woke Beauty pageant. Rachel would like her 5,000 followers to know she goes by she, her pronouns. She would also like them to know that she was offended by this sexist comment from Troy Aikman. How dare this male birthing person instruct these players to take off their dresses? Here are a couple of others, just for shits and giggles. One comes from an aspiring shitfuck named Trevor, who enjoys playing Never Have I Ever. Never have I ever experienced the pleasure of dual cucumber insertion. Here's another from our friend Rachel Blackstar. Now, as you can see, she is a thoughtful shitfuck. She graciously applied her mask to hide the absolute grotesqueness that's hidden behind it. Now, the overreaction, it wasn't specific to woke Twitter, virgin Twitter, black Twitter, whatever the fuck. The mainstream media, the mainstream media got in on the action too. Yes, Alex, I will take mythical misogyny for 200, please. The answer, which Hall of Fame quarterback should lose his job on Monday Night Football for improper use of the future pronoun dress? Ah, uh, Alex, that would be Troy Aikman. Am I allowed to use his last name? It contains the word man, and Dr. Peachcock hasn't confirmed Troy Aikman is actually a male birthing person. Headline over at USA Today, Troy Aikman makes misogynistic comment on Monday Night Football. Headline at something called The Crossing Board. People are saying Troy Aikman is a misogynist. People? What people? The proper term is shitfuck. I'm surprised we haven't seen something from Deadspin yet, but our favorite Karen, Karen was too busy advocating for the Lions to fire Dan Campbell. You know, because if Dan Campbell were a black head coach, he would already be fired. I saw one comment on Twitter blasting Troy Aikman, claiming that we need to get rid of this 90s talk. It's dangerous. It's offensive. No. We need to get back to the 90s talk. I feel so fortunate to have grown up in the 90s, the era where anything goes, nothing was off limits, everyone was pushing the boundaries. If you were offended in the 90s, you were ostracized, you were called out. Today, the roles have completely reversed. If you're offended today, you're victimized. If you're the offender, you're ostracized. I heard an interesting analysis the other day. I often say here on the channel that this movement is designed to destroy everything the woke fungus infects, it destroys. But the other day, I was given an alternate theory. Shitfucks are not destroying, they are reimagining 
They're changing the definition of everything. They're changing the definition of decency, equity, racism, misogyny, victim. Hell, they're changing the definition of man and woman. I couldn't argue with the point. The assessment was spot on. You sit back and wonder, how did we get here? We got here because most of us were silent as it was happening. The mainstream media, they're going to continue using anything they can to ruin the NFL. Every week, they exploit a situation involving this league and spin the situation to fit their narrative. If they can't find something, they simply make it up. At the same time, America? America continues rejecting the bullshit. The NFL continues to dominate in the ratings. The late afternoon window last Sunday on Fox drew 24 million viewers, 30% of that number in the 18 to 49 demo. Even the worst game the NFL has presented, God, in years at least, maybe even decades, that Thursday night stinker between the Colts and Broncos, they drew nearly 10 million viewers. It was on Amazon Prime behind a paywall. Major League Baseball, the NBA, they can't draw 10 million on free television. The NFL's drawing that number on a subscription service. This is why I was saying yesterday, we were talking about Jon Stewart. Just because you're behind a paywall doesn't mean you can't attract an audience. If your content is worth watching, people are willing to pay. Shit fucks continue to fail because woke content is unwatchable. But let me know what you think. The Virgins come out in full force, attacking Troy Aikman over mythical misogyny. Give me your thoughts. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.